Good afternoon and welcome to CC Gurukul lecture. In today's lecture, we are going to discuss about unpaid domestic work and this is part of the series Sociology of Work. In the first half of the lecture, we discussed about what is unpaid domestic work, how it leads to uh, an undervalue or valuation of the work done by women and then it also kind of uh, leads to a continuum where women's status is subordinated. In this part of the lecture, we are going to talk more about sociological work, theories of feminist work in terms of how they have problematized or helped us to understand the nature of unpaid domestic work. So when we look into domestic work as we have defined already, it is all kind of work which is done within the household in order to kind of uh, maintain the family and the uh, perfect you know, the idea of perfect family family or a balanced family. But in sociological literature, the two work, domestic work and housework are kind of misleading. It's not necessarily the same work because domestic work, uh, you know, we also use the term kind domestic help. Now, domestic help is a kind of a work which is compensated. But when we look and talk about housework, it's uh, 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 mentions housewife which is uncompensated. So a number of feminist writings, sociological writing have problematized this but that has kind of come in very late. Earlier most of the sociology of work was talking about uh, commitment, shift from pre-industrial to industrial society, the growth of information society and the gender dimension was mi missing. Feminist sociologists guys started writing say 1970s, 80s onward and they started focusing on married women doing unpaid domestic work. So the first study of housework as study was started uh, was done in 1972 in the USA and then it kind of followed the second study was done by Anne Oakley a feminist scholar who has also given us the understanding of how uh, uh, sex is bi is kind of uh, biological whereas gender is a social construct so it was kind of understanding uh, a biological understanding of the division of labor so Anne Oakley studied the homework or the domestic work as work being done by wives and mother. This is married women who were doing work within the realm of the uh, household. And this is not something that we can only see in the uh, Western countries. You know, there's a kind of an understanding even in the Indian context, say large part of North India, where women prior to their marriage are not so much engaged in domestic work. But uh, marriage as such creates a condition where women becomes a full-time domestic worker. So that needs to be understood that why marriage uh, kind of looks into the extension of service of the men members, male members of the house. And that leads to kind of an understanding that housewife is considered as a low status. And even if we look into the whole idea of uh, class and gender and we go by the feminist study of Wolvi, uh, Sylvia Wolvi, it kind of uh, she argues that women don't have a class. It is the class of the men that belongs to them. So a housewife too kind of uh, depends on their status, on their class, on the class of their husbands. So women doing unpaid domestic work were kind of uh, 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 has this is universal and uniform pattern are considered lower in status in society and why why are they kind of have uh, considered as having a low status there are a number of factors number one lack of payment so we we know that domestic work is unpaid labor it is not counted in the category of economic work the second is informal recruitment and that is also we know that uh, if we look into the work and we will try to understand the distinction between formal work and informal work. So in informal sector, that is contract, uh, irregular work, part-time work, most of the time recruitment is through say spread of mouth or some middleman comes in and gives you. So you don't have a, say a proper advertisement in the newsletter, uh, newspaper or any social media or uh, any, any, anywhere, but uh, you just kind of put a notice that this uh, uh, job is free, anybody can walk in and uh, if it's through reference or it is through patrimonial ties, one gets it. So this is similarly, marriage is a form of recruitment. Once a woman is married, she is recruited into the household labor. And uh, that is the reason, uh, the th third criteria that entry into the, uh, uh, since why would we call it as a, a labor because it is work which is being done for the production of goods and services. So the entry into this labor market is through marriage or cohabitation. And then 
the most important thing that we, that helps us to understand the low status of housewife is the fact that it is an ascribed status it is not an achieved status so just as caste you are born into a caste it is you are ascribed a status as a brahmin or a kshatriya so you are married into a household uh, 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 because marriage happens you become uh, say a wife of so and so therefore you get this status of housewife not through achievement but by kind of marriage so that is the ascribed status obviously is kind of less fluid when we look into achieved status achieved status can be improved uh, one can work hard and move up the ladder mobility is there ascribed status mobility is closed so there is where the housewife status becomes low now low status is widening uh, if we look into the idea and this kind of uh, is changing lot of uh, 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 say documents or tele serials and social media videos are telling us that there is a change but by and large some it does continue that there is a hesitant you know when one asks a child what does your mother do and they say uh, oh she is only at home it kind of negates the idea that she is doing any kind of work uh, but if the mother is say a doctor or a professor the child takes a pride in do, uh, saying that so just a housewife or hesitant to mention that it is a work shows the low status of women doing domestic work now we need to have this understanding of domestic work into the theoretical framework of sociology of work and here uh, we can apply blonner's theory which is uh, blonner's theory of alienation which is kind of uh, uh, building on the karl marx theory of alienation in the sense that you are kind of getting alienated from your own labor from your own product and community so here three or four characteristics of alienation has been used to understand how domestic work because it is underpaid because it is undervalued can be kind of uh, considered very similar to leading to alienation and therefore the first feature is powerlessness how they you know there is some amount of autonomy and freedom to do work because there is no kind of fixed time or you don't have any kind of uh, immediate boss to report to but then uh, the, this uh, autonomy and freedom is very subjective it would differ from household to household some women are kind of bound by a very strong Uh, uh, control of the male head or uh, uh, of the household and not only in terms of personal uh, pressure it could be also the cultural pressure or the demand of the household which kind of questions the freedom and autonomy so there is always a pressure to complete work on time to kind of complete work in a perfect so you have to be efficient you have to give in the good result and you cannot be a failure so this is the a uh, kind of contradiction of freedom on everyday basis the next uh, uh, characteristic that would help us to understand domestic work as alienating is meaninglessness and that, therefore if we look into the whole idea of what are the work that is being doing it is be- very repetitive it, it it includes the same kind of work without any kind of innovation without any kind of change endlessly uh, doing it every day and therefore it could kind of uh, lead to uh, meaningless uh, work but then you know there is also the whole uh, compensatory where we kind of uh, uh, celebrate motherhood and people say that the physical labor put into it is kind of reduced when you become say uh, uh, celebrate maternity and motherhood but then one does not deny the fact that child rearing or the daily cause of work is tiring and at time it kind of disturbs the mental balance of women so women from upper classes they reduce physical labor so there is a class element as i already said in the beginning that uh, it is a certain class of women who are more alienated than uh, uh, the others for instance if you are economically well off or you are in the upper class you can hire a domestic help and therefore you can kind of uh, be escaping this meaninglessness so you will see a number of women from the upper class also becoming uh, taking part in several other part time or voluntary work but then when it comes to the economically weaker section who cannot afford to kind of uh, outsource the work it is monotonous and physically tiring and then the third feature that we talk about uh, in terms of understanding domestic work as assembly line worker so 
so what we look into the assembly line worker uh, in terms of industrial society where women uh, the each worker was kind to be uh, as efficient in order to ensure the end result was produced so according to an okay domestic work is very similar to what is uh, labeled as an assembly line worker they are both working in terms of unskilled and repetitive work so the alienation which we talk about in the factory is experienced in the household by women it create kind of creates a loneliness you know when you have this whole idea of uh, being solely responsible for the child rearing it cuts into women from uh, the family from community and many a time from social life so it leads to loneliness and we have seen this in number of documents uh, documentaries and in studies that when the children grow up the women then have a lot of uh, time which is there and number of women men larger a large percentage of women uh, would take up part time or voluntary work but this also needs to be sociologically understood that why part time and voluntary work because as we already discussed in the first half part time voluntary work does not uh, question the uh, work which is done by domestic uh, at the domestic ranch so it is kind of balanced or uh, or we look into critically it add ons to the burden of the work so nobody is kind of denied the fact that they have to do the do- domestic work it is then added an addition to the work which women do uh, do so the fourth feature when we look into uh, domestic work as uh, alienating is self estrangement and uh, like uh, we all say they kind of this kind of uh, uh, no innovative uh, or there is lack of any kind of uh, uh, new ideas or innovations in kind of doing the same repetitive monotonous work and it kind of leads to self estrangement lot of psychological studies have uh, kind of made reference that post uh, uh, say uh, motherhood experience there are lo- m- number of women who experience personality crisis it is very difficult to cope up you know with the uh, say if uh, a woman withdraws from the uh, market uh, and she was well placed or she was working well in the professional work and then she has to give it up so there is a tra- uh, uh, psychological inconsistency that women experience so domestic work for women is alienating but those who are doing as part of the formal work it is not so we have already said this that it could be uh, two kinds of domestic work one which is done by women as part of the family labor the other which is outsourced to the market so those who are coming in as pref- uh, kind of doing it as a uh, part of their earning or as part of getting a compensation for them then then it's not kind of alienating so there is a kind of a middle level of alienation in the uh domestic work now what is very important to understand when we look into domestic work in the contemporary context is to understand the fact that the information society or post industrial society is technology driven and there are a lot of studies or arguments which kind of argues that when technology comes in and number of technology has entered the domestic sphere say for washing machine or kind of a uh, uh, number of them to uh, can be named it saved on the time that women were doing and uh, kind of uh, l- helped in reducing the alienation that they were experiencing but for many feminists this is a myth it has not kind of led in the reduction of the hours of work that women do on the domestic work a full a study on working time a full time housewife in usa shows that from 1960s uh, say till uh, 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 say from 1920s to 1960s there has been no change in the total hours of work that a woman spends in domestic work and the uh, uh, study points out that around 52 hours a week is spent on uh, domestic work so what happens is that again we we need to because we are looking into sociology of work we compare it with the work which is done in the factory so number of studies have documented that when technology comes in it leads to the decline of the physical labor for instance say in the garment industry when the power loom comes in it saves on the physical labor that uh, we were would be doing uh, through manual work but in the house work uh, house uh, hold work or the domestic work it has not led to the decline in the physical work done or the work hour of uh, spent by women labor saving devices due to advancement of technology uh, kind of has remained same 
why has it remained same because if you have one technology where you are doing and then it uh, it is also an understanding that women are multitasking so say for instance if they are kind of washing the clothes in the washing machine uh, the tendency is to kind of put on the machine and then do something else so the hour of work or the amount of work that they are doing is not getting reduced so domestic technology has not reduced housework and it has kind of not reduced the demand so both the thing we need to keep in eye the number of hours that has been uh, put in by the housewives are not reduced plus there is no decline in the physical labor so uh, despite technology despite a capitalist mode of production uh, the argument that is made by feminist sociologist is that the undervaluation of domestic work continues uh, why do we kind of uh, need to understand that why is there persistence of undervaluation both in terms of the quantity and quality of output or, uh, or the work that they are doing and the understanding is that obviously that takes us back to the traditional society where the division of labor was done and this dichotomy between the domestic work being undervalued as secondary and the public work being more valued and getting a higher compensation continues and that is the reason why uh, there is an undervaluation of domestic work so the redistribution of time spent of di different work you uh, you know you save time in one work you kind of uh, use that time to do many other work so the physical labor is not kind of declining and it is uh, rather technology has added on and now we you know we we can see all around that a number of women are do getting involved in online marketing business or you have, we read lot of uh, advertisements in the paper are you a housewife you just need to devote 2 hours and you can make 20000 a month so those uh, adjustments have to be made where the domestic work continues to remain the core work that women has to do and then add on to her burden by doing all kinds of other work so according to ann oakley there is a tendency of housewives to continuously improve standard in you know so this uh, this uh, burden on fem females to keep the standard up to the mark not only of the social cultural moral ethical values but also the economic value and therefore they continue to take on the uh, burden of doing multiple task so the uh, anokle says that the standard of work has to be improved and therefore uh, uh, you know the kind of uh, add on to the work satisfaction or the even the number of work hours that they are doing kind of increases and there is a kind of uh, uh, if we look into again data and statistics it says that women are not only in terms of uh, doing lot of online shopping and lot of traveling but there is also in terms of increased consumption women are the greatest consumers today all kinds of goods and services women are the consumers and the market kind of uh, targets women to consume more and more so you uh, why are the market targeting the housewife because they have kind of made sense of the idea that they uh, these women or uh, who have been experiencing or doing engaged in domestic work over the year, period of time have the desire to escape isolation so you have a number of gadgets or number of uh, 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 technology that are oriented towards the household to kind of let women experience household work or domestic work in a new form so the market has taken benefit of the unpaid Uh, domestic work now when we look into technology and look into the whole idea that has technology reduced domestic work hour we kind of uh, arrive at this understanding that measurement of working hours specifically of housewives and those doing domestic work is difficult to measure their methodological difficulty in measuring the exact amount of time spent uh, in the domestic sphere say in the uh, public sphere we have these uh, the scene which takes your uh, hour you enter the office and then you uh, move out so you have an exact uh, uh, measurement that 9 to 5 or 10 to 6 so you know the hours of work that you worked but here uh, there is no kind of a fixed timing there is no specific division of work according to the time therefore it would be very difficult to Uh, measure the work 
also some work are longer it takes a lot a large number of hours and then there could be a gap and then again a secondary activity of a smaller period could come in so how do you actually measure the number of hours that women are doing domestic work is difficult to measure the second difficulty in measuring working hours is in terms of uh, 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 difficulty to isolate the time impact of one specified technological change so if we, maybe one technology has brought about change but it leads to the same time in terms of doing another work the third problem in terms of measurement of working hours is technological change does not take place in vacuum and this is very important we you know we have to look into the fundamental changes which is taking in in the social sector in the cultural sector and we need to kind of look into uh, the whole idea that it could be saving time for men but creates more time work for women but then we cannot kind of throw the baby with the water, bath water and say the technology has brought about no change that would be incorrect there are certain positive outcome of uh, technology and the most important or the most positive outcome of technology is that yes it has given this possibility of women to participate in paid labor even though they are participating say in the online uh, uh, marketing or kind of uh, say uh, nowadays you have this whole idea of uh, youtubers or the technology so it has kind of given this scope of women to enter the paid labor and therefore it can be said that development of technology is a mixed blessing for women it kind of has both negative and positive consequences so when we look into the contemporary society and try to understand domestic work with reference to say the market uh, the increased consumption uh, or women as consumer how do we look into the changing pattern of domestic work and a number of theories a uh, sociological theories has come uh, uh, in order to look into the development of industrial capability to changing pattern of domestic work and the foremost theory is that of young and wilmot young and wilmot gives us a theory of symmetrical family it is kind of looks into the evolution of the society through the historical sequences and how the gender division of labor changes so 18th century pre industrial society we know uh, and i have already said that we had a kind of a subsistence economy and both men and women were part of the family labor so there was a kind of an egalitarian relations at workplace when we go to this whole uh, move towards 19th century and we see the emergence of this industrial family it is at this point that men started going to the industry the industry as symbolic of the public space and women continue to stay back at uh, because of the reproductive and biological uh, Uh, process they were retained in the domestic sphere so 19th century industrial family becomes symbolic of in in inequality and segregation now from 19th century to 20th century we see that segregation would kind of go on increasing and they would these two sphere the domestic sphere and the public sphere would be kind of pull apart the so gender segregation continues to increase and it kind of leads into the formation of multiple family types by 21st century and here when we talk about symmetrical family symmetrical family would be a family where gender roles are egalitarian and then we'll move to 21st century this is becomes asymmetrical where we see there are kind of different kinds of family there are families in which both uh, men and women are work uh, part of the paid labor there are some in which women are part of the paid labor men are not so it kind of leads to a kind of different kinds of uh, uh, asymmetrical family in the contemporary uh, 21st century but what is kind of an argued by feminist scholars and sociologists is that despite technological changes despite the market uh, economic changes there has been a persistence of female participation in domestic work and there have to be certain factors which is responsible for this so the for, according to morris uh, uh, work uh, written in 1990 there are three interconnected explanation the first explanation is the institutional constraint and this we have already understood the distinction between men as breadwinner as primary earner versus women as secondary earner so the primary responsibility continues to be the men and therefore whether to be a part of the market or not to be a part of the market makes them kind of select 
uh, or not necessarily the women selecting, but the society selects the domestic sphere for women. And uh, 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 the domestic sphere that and that we can understand that even when women are doing the domestic, uh, say working, then she comes back and does the domestic work. And on the contrary, men who are not in employment or not doing any kind of public work will not do any kind of uh, 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 domestic work. So, gender norms has kind of continued the dichotomy between breadwinner and secondary earner is kind of something which needs to be questioned or something that needs to be rethought about. And um, uh, you know the whole idea of identifying domestic work as specifically a feminine work is where the problem lies. And it, when we talk about a gender, uh, gender balance society or gender egalitarian society, we need to do two things. Num first is to do away with the dichotomy between domestic and the public and then the second is to do away with the uh, assignment of feminine and domestic, masculine and public. So, once these dichotomies are done away with, then there could be an equal participation of men and women in both domestic and public work and that could lead to a kind of recognition of the work that women are doing and at the same time improve the subordinate status that women have been uh, part of. So, you know, uh, uh, you, nowadays we can say that earlier we said that uh, women were doubly burdened. Now the argument is that women are triple burdened. As wife, they are doing the unpaid work, they are the, doing the paid work in the, uh, say, in the public sphere and women who are educated and who are doing public work are also doing husband's paid work. So, husband's job career or husband's promotions progress is more significant and therefore, she would sacrifice her own public work and ensure that it is done. So, these uh, you know uh, leads to kind of understanding that domestic work has to be outsourced. Outsourcing of domestic work is seen as a solution and several ways of how uh, outsourcing is direct with paid indirect with manufacturing group and appliances that aid production. So, but outsourcing domestic work is a partial solution. It will increase load on women and it is expensive. So, we need to conclude by uh, a statement by Manuel Castell who says, increased involvement of women in paid job burdens women like quadruple, paid work, homemaking, child rearing and night shift. So, women carry large burden of both paid and unpaid job. Increased employment of domestic help added to work for women which is management of this uh, domestic help. So, we need to kind of critically think into these uh, uh, dimension in order to evolve a holistic understanding of gendered nature of work. With this, I come to an end of today's lecture. Thank you.